welcome to another video taking a look at the Bandai Custom Stormtrooper model kits. Now I've done a review for these so you can check those out on my channel. I've also reviewed the 1.6 edition, the special Luke Skywalker and Han Solo version of these figures as well as SH Figuarts Stormtroopers as well as a bootleg Mathfex figure that's also at this scale. So you can take a look at those as well hopefully after this video. Today we're going to take a look at two custom painted ones that I've done. I'm also going to go into a little bit of detail on which paints that I use to get these customs made as well as uh, sharing a few of my personal experiences as a very sort of um, basic model painter that can hopefully help other sort of uh, beginners to uh, ease into and avoid some of the mistakes that I made and get some really good looking figures. I also want to ask your suggestion on what uh, variants of Stormtroopers you'd like to see me paint and um, see how that goes. So without further ado, here are the two figures that I've painted in this video. Today we're looking at two figures that I'm quite proud with. On the left hand side I like to call the Magma Trooper. He's orange and metallic red. And on the right hand side we have the Aqua or Marine figure. He's metallic blue and metallic green for the most part. I'm just going to zoom out there you can see that uh, with this trooper he's mostly metallic orange but on the bottom there he's got a gradients of metallic red on his boots as well as his arms. There's some silver lining on the pouches there and some nice chrome coloring for his eyes and jaw area. And of course the underneath areas are all still black as it should be. The weapons are also painted to match their custom color designs. You see the rifle there has got gradients of orange and red. I think that was pretty cool. And with him, he's mostly blue, again with the metallics and silvers and all that, just like him. But he's got gradients of green on his boots, his arms, as well as this gun right there. If I just turn these two around, I decided to give him a chrome backpack gear there. I think that matches this color scheme. And for him, I decided to give him some green highlights on these extra pieces there, which I think it kind of looks sort of neon almost, but definitely retro. The E11 blaster is also coloured, custom coloured to match them. I'll take a closer look at those, but I'll keep the pouches black just to make something stand out. If the in My idea was that if the entire thing was all of this gradient colour, then bits won't stand out. Having some gaps between the colouring, some black areas, some silver areas definitely makes these look better. At least I think so anyway. You don't want a thing that's just gold, just silver, just chrome. You want bits of blacks inside to highlight the chrome colouring. These figures I use very basic metallic spray cans I can get in Hong Kong. For example I have the metallic red, metallic orange here. You can see this can cost 45 Hong Kong dollars to get. It's shrink wrapped for the most part. And so is this one. All of them are shrink wrapped. And this one's like PS15, this one's a uh, PS61, these are Tamiya colors. I used to not like this because I didn't understand how to use them. I was like, uh, I'll use something else. And I used to paint a lot of my model kits with just Gundam marker pens. And the problem with that is, is that eventually the color becomes very uneven or when you're still drawing on the plastic and some of the paint starts drying up, it'll just get gunked up and it'll look really nasty. For those of you who don't want to invest money in a huge sort of spray machine and spray pen, you can definitely use these and these can still bring up really good results if you know how to use these. And for the blue one of course I had uh, like, you know, the metallic blue and just a metallic green colour. This one's like a TS-19. I don't have any uh, metallic green colour left because I must have used it up. So I didn't have that. So that's cool. And uh, another thing that I didn't know when spraying things is that um, first of all you want to dump the plastic in soap water to clean off any excess oils on the plastic so the paints can stick better. But aside from that another thing you got to do is you must protect the paints after you paint them or else they will chip off. Sometimes people in the past have even asked my videos like how do you avoid things from chipping off when you custom paint things. Well then you need these, um, I use this one Mr. Hobby, Mr. Super Clean because they're cheap and big enough to uh, spray enough things so I quite like them. This one's a gloss colour with a UV cut so that's good, you don't want your paint, your hard and time spent on painting to fade on the sunlight so a UV one is pretty good and I also have this one here which is a matte finish. Now here's one thing that nobody told me, I had to look it up, I, I don't even see it in YouTube videos, I'm sure some people talk about it but it's hard to find but in blogs people say hey if you want to do a matte finish do not just use a matte paint, you must use gloss first. I don't know why that is but it just has to happen. Uh, in fact, I didn't. I think I didn't even get this knowledge from a blog. Someone told me 
like a friend who's quite good painting Gundam models, he told me you gotta do that. And the reason is, if you only use a matte finish, first of all, it doesn't look nice if you spray too little and it doesn't protect the paint. If you want the paint to be protected, you gotta spray it enough, like at least two or three layers. But if you only spray matte finish, what you end up is, is the edges that somehow have just a little bit more starts to look like it's moldy. It just a, a thick layer of white just shines off it. And at that point, you gotta remove it, you gotta remove all your paint and repaint the whole model again because it's it's pointless just to chip bits away and just repaint that. You gotta, the best result is to paint the whole thing all over again. And uh, you can't just use this, so what do you do? Well, use the gloss first. First, you gloss over everything uh, at least twice at least twice to protect it and then only then do you use a very very little amount of this so let's for example i'll be like uh so let's say this can is my model kit and i'm roughly about this distance sort of like that and go never hold your can still and go that that's no even with paints just go Sort of like that, like the movement. And you know, you rotate the thing around and spray it in other corners. Don't, don't be too thick. Let it dry for an hour and then go again for this one. And uh, that's just for the gloss. So, you know, let it dry for an hour, spray it again later. Maybe it doesn't even need to be an hour. So just let it do that. And then once you've done that, this one you're gonna go tss, tss, tss. Don't go tss, like the gloss one. No, you don't wanna do that. You're just gonna go tss, tss. Wait for it to dry and see how it looks first. And if it looks okay, you don't need to spray anymore. If it's not quite matte enough, then go and do this again. Tss, 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 tss. But you still sort of want to have a continuous movement. I'm only going like tss, 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 because it's like a small piece, but if it's a bigger piece, then you're going to go tss, 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 like that. And then you should have a nice matte finish. Of course, um, you know, you still want to change it up a little bit if it doesn't work quite well for you, but that's what I did. And for the chrome effect on the Stormtrooper's eyes, I used this pen, it's called the uh, Liquid Chrome 20 Years Edition. I can't remember how much this is, it's not cheap for a pen, but this is by uh, Molotov, the original, and it looks like this. It's a chrome pen, they're different sizes, different refill packs, it's got a shaking thing inside, you really want to shake this. And uh, gloss over this is okay, but of course don't put any matte on it and just turn into regular silver and then the chrome effect is gone and it makes this pen completely pointless. So yeah, this one doesn't mix with matte. Let's look at the figure. Now, one thing about these metallic finishes is uh, when you first spray it, it doesn't look quite right. It only looks really good once you've applied the gloss spray over it to smooth everything out and give it a nice shine. So this is metallic, it's not as shiny as I'd like it to be, but I still think it looks really good. You can see I left out the little black areas that I got down. You can get thin uh, Gundam marker pens or uh, some sort of oil-based 0.01 millimeter pens and you just, just fill it back in. And um, the way I sprayed this was, uh, these were all already assembled previously. So I just took them apart, took the white bits away and I uh, ripped the helmet apart. The good thing about these model kits is because you don't use, normally don't use glue to glue them down and they're still quite secure. There's still no glue on these. You can rip these apart and respray and repaint them that way. I think for Stormtroopers, unless you're only going for a single color, it's much easier to spray pieces after you assemble it. Of course, some people will still like to spray these before they start assembling if they, ex if they already know exactly what kind of colors they want to go for. And then none of the joints, none of these black areas on the hands are sprayed at all. This is just a natural plastic color. Uh, don't paint the joints, I don't really recommend that because you're going to be rubbing that a lot and even if you protect it, it will probably scratch eventually. And of course there's some rubber bits inside that just don't work well with paints. But to answer this right now, I'm quite happy with this. Now the red belt there is just what it previously was. Uh, I think I touched up a little bit. This figure used to be uh, painted as like a Spongebob color scheme. You still see a bit of yellow there that I forgot to remove. Uh, I'm keeping it there, just to remember that this used to be Spongebob Stormtrooper. Insert image here. <laughs> Looks silly. <laughs> so yeah, uh, take the tummy apart, you can take these little dots there, that's actually a separate piece. That's awesome that that is a separate piece, you can take that out and repaint that. So I'll paint that separately as you wish. I suppose at some point I probably would want to uh, glue down some parts of this because uh, some areas are easier to fall off than the others and that can be quite, quite annoying as well. This centerpiece here is painted in the red, these straps are painted in the red just to contrast the orange colour. And uh, yep, there we go. Uh, I'll put like a full figure rotating video at the end of this so you can take a nice clean look at this figure once you're done. I've painted all the armor bits on the extra hands with the same metallic red colour as well. 
So yep, and we have our gun here. So like I said, this gun matches his color scheme, of course, for the tip there. I just used the chrome pen. It was just sort of experimenting to see what looks good, and I think it turns out okay. So I'm ha quite happy with that. I've done the same thing with the E11 blaster as well. The tip there is just done in that chrome paint. The rest of the gun is pretty much red. Uh, I don't think I've put any orange on this whatsoever, but the ammo clip and the extra attachment there, I kept it in black, just again to make things stand out a bit more. This uh, long way follows, follows the same principle. The chrome tip, black attachment, accessories, but this one I did give it the gradient because it's a bigger gun so I can afford to do that. Now if you want to know how I got the gradient thing done, so first of all I'll paint this whole thing in the base color first, so in this case the metallic orange, all of it. And once I've done that, uh, you know, these pieces would be separate with the joints on there. Once I've done that, I was like, okay, I'll think about it. So my hands are going to be red, so all the hands were painted red. My feet and lower legs and lower arms are going to be red. So, okay, the feet get spray painted into the red metallic color. So that's fine. So uh, basically the hardest bit to get here is the lower legs and the lower arms, which these are the places where you have the gradients. Oops, I have a broken piece there. And uh, the way you do this is pretty much... Well, you just wing it. Uh, what you do is you have the plastic in sort of this direction and you have the spray coming in in this way. You don't, you don't want to spray it straight on, you want to spray it sideways. It just goes and do it the same all the way around it and you should have a nice gradient. I learned this from Cosplay Chris's YouTube page. I quite like his channel, he does quite nice uh, custom figures. So thank you for the tips there, I watched your video and it's really awesome. And he's like Australian, and it's cool. So yeah, I did that. So yeah, again, once again, you spray it from the side, like just on an angle. So hopefully uh, you would have a nice gradient. I uh, actually chipped off some of my paint there, I'm quite sad. Mm -hmm. Is a blue sort of aqua marine trooper. I think his colors are now much nicer than the red one. I like the red one that's the first one I did, but I really like this blue and green combination. I just think it looks really cool. Follows the same paint philosophy as the red one there. We got that chrome and black bits all done up to highlight. Didn't paint any of the joints or the inner hand areas. And on the back here, the green highlights on the straps there, as well as the centerpiece and this gear done in green. So yeah. Again, with the gradient on the lower arms and the lower legs. So that's pretty cool. I like this a lot. And of course, I painted the extra hands in the same bluish metallic color. Got the gun with the silver tip there. But I didn't do any chrome on the uh, E11 blaster. I thought this actually looks kind of nicer like this way. As well as the green and blue sort of mixes of gradients on this long rifle there. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at uh, two of my custom painted Stormtroopers, red and blue, metallic, red and blue, magma and aqua troopers. And just a few more tips here, Don't again, don't spray too much on the figure at a time, do it in layers, let it dry and then spray it again if you need to, just to thicken it up just a little bit, don't spray too close to the figure or I guess you get bubbles. I'm no means at all an expert on this thing, so these are just some beginner tips for some beginners. <laughs> People have painted models all the time with more advanced techniques, they can look at these and see a lot of flaws and by all means leave a comment below because um, you know I want to paint better stuff in the future as well. So these figures aside from the few chrome areas and black highlights are all done with spray can paints and as a result I really like this one. This is my favorite out of all the ones that I've done but um, I have a few more to show you guys next time. So once again, let me know what custom design Stormtrooper you want me to go with with the next. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.